Once upon a time, in the town of Hatfield, Pennsylvania, there lived a family named the Coastals. They were known to have jokesters throughout their family history, dating way back when to their first ancestor, Ding Dong Ditch Jesus, early one afternoon. Yeah, you could say it's a long tradition. The jokester gene usually fell into one child of the generation. A strange phenomenon, if you ask me. But the tides were about to change on this coastal prankster. Yes, indeed. Jarrett was the youngest of three sons born into the family. His mother Mary, bless her heart, was a, was a hard-working mother. But she was more gullible than a dog chasing its tail around in a circle. Jarrett, being the slick devil that he was, knew this and would always play tricks on his mom. His mom would constantly have to warn him about how his pranks might come back to bite him one day. Jarrett always ignored his mother's warning. But little did he know, his mother would be right. One day, while Jarrett was sitting in his bedroom, he came up with his best prank yet. He would trick his mother into thinking his car was being stolen when it actually wasn't. Jarrett's car was his prized possession. He would spend whole days cleaning and waxing it, making sure that it was polished and clean. Jarrett, knowing how gullible his mom was, and that she knew how much he loved his car, knew that she was bound to fall for the trick. So Jarrett waited until one Sunday morning when his mom was in the kitchen doing dishes. He jumped off the couch, ran into the kitchen, and told his mom the bad news. His mom dropped the dishes in the sink and followed Jarrett out of the kitchen, into the driveway, more worried than a wild turkey smelling Thanksgiving dinner out the dining room window. They ran to where the car usually sat in the driveway, but there the car sat, unharmed. His mother couldn't believe the prank Jared had pulled on her, and once again began to warn him about how his pranks co might come back to bite him, as she scolded him in the driveway. Jared laughed at his mother's warning, as the both of them returned inside. Once again, his mother's warning had little to no effect on him, and Jared returned to his bedroom followed by his angry mother. Later that day, Jarrett was laying in his bedroom when he decided to pull the prank again, only this time he would yell even louder. So Jarrett jumped off his bed, ran down the hallway, and into the dining room where he found his mother browsing the internet. He frantically explained how he had saw his car being stolen out of his bedroom window, and that this time he was genuine. His mother jumped off the computer, and both of them filed out, of the, out into the driveway. Once again, they found the car unharmed. Even more frustrated than before, Jarrett's mother scolded him and asked when the pranks were going to end. Her heart just couldn't take the tricks anymore. Jarrett once again left at his mother, becoming angry. He then returned inside. Little did the family know, but a thief had spotted Jarrett's car one day while it was glistening in the sun. It was then he spotted his next target. The thief had been watching in the bushes while Jarrett pulled his pranks and realized it was the perfect time to strike. The thief slowly made his way towards the car. He pried open the door, hot-wired the engine, and began to back down the driveway. Jarrett's worst nightmare was becoming a reality. Jarrett, still trying to plot his next prank, suddenly saw his car backing out of the driveway with a man with a mask driving. It was then he realized that his car was being stolen. He jumped out of the rocking chair to find his mother, who was at the kitchen table reading the Sunday newspaper. Despite her gullibleness, she had grown tired of Jarrett's pranks, and she wasn't falling for this one again. Desperate to stop the thief, Jarrett rushed outside to see if he could catch the slippery criminal. He ran through the front yard and into the street, but it was too late. The thief had already pulled out of the street, too far away for Jarrett to catch him. Jarrett ran back inside. The thief was a master at his craft, and the police never found his car. His prized possession was gone. The coastal prankster Gene had backfired on him. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a story of the coastal prankster. <laughs>